Welcome everyone. This is Eric Drake and this is Rush waving on his camera to get attention. And by the way, this is the first ever Bafo Asks What. I bet you weren't expecting this for at least another couple months. But here we are, as promised, right in time for our next show. It is, uh, the next show, by the way, is June 14th, this Sunday. June Sunday, 14th, Sunday, this Sunday, Sunday. I'm assuming, this is Saturday right now, so I'm assuming this is going to get put up right away. Um, Film Friday night, because we don't lie to you, the people. That's, that's right. Well, oh yeah, it is Friday. Shit. Well, with my work schedule, I'm all fucked up. Anyways, anyways, so again, this is Baffle Asks What, new show, episode number one, where I'm going to ask the tough questions here with Mr. Rush. And not only am I asking the tough questions... You're asking the tough questions because you sent me a bunch of great, in, uh, great stuff uh, over uh, Facebook Messenger. And in fact, you know, some of it's great. We're not going to get to include it all. Uh, we've had some uh, technical errors, uh, video errors, and all that stuff. So, again, sorry. We'll try to include as much as possible. But if it's not there, suck it. Sorry. Do what we could. So, uh, first, let's start off talking about. Um, why not with what everyone else is talking about? And, and it's no no offense. And, and uh, Mr. Mr. Dusty Rhodes. That guy's a fucking legend. I put it as simple as possible. But uh, definitely uh, definitely sad to hear that passing too because um, I woke up and found out yesterday that Christopher Lee had died, who I'm also a big fan of. Um, you know, Count Dooku, he was Dracula, he was a Bond villain, you know, Sauron, uh, so many things over he's his nine A thousand years. different characters. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he is a uh, cinematic prize, um, that's for sure. Just like Dusty Rose is a, a prize to the, the wrestling industry for so many years. Um, and it was a little more sad to, for Dusty because he, he died at 69, whereas Christopher Lee had died at 93. Um, we missed out on a couple of great years that he could have he he given the wrestling industry and, and, and to his family as well. He was still contributing to this day. I mean, his reach was so long. I mentioned this. I read a tweet about this yesterday, uh, and I shared it with the, on the WWE Facebook page. He came up with War Games, and, uh, which pushed in at least two decades, uh, maybe three. I'm not exactly – I'm not a WCW historian. Um, and then he also had a hand in creating Bray Wyatt, who's one of my current favorite wrestlers uh, on the WWE roster. So that just shows you his reach. And before I forget, I remember when he was commissioner in TNA, because he had a short a couple of years in TNA, he actually made those count to the best of his, his ability. There's only so much you can do in TNA. Um, when he was commissioner, he used to have his uh, office out of the back of his pickup truck. <laughs> and he used to have all this hay around and stuff like that, but... Uh, man, the wrestling world lost a great uh, human being and entertainer, booker, writer, wrestler, the whole works uh, in Dusty Rhodes yesterday. No doubt about that. There was no doubt about that. I mean, there, there's not one word that can describe Dusty Rhodes. I mean, like you said, booker, wrestler, this and this and that. And so, and so uh, speaking of booking, uh, one of our questions comes right from, uh, right from our fellow wrestlers. And, and he had asked, or she had asked, you know, I'm not going to... Because we have female wrestlers on the roster. We don't have female wrestlers, but we have females who like to put their opinion into our shows, and it's greatly appreciated. We're not gonna we're not gonna say anything against that. But <laughs> sure, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but um, one of one of them had asked, uh, you know, Rush, we only have about ten men ten men on our fucking roster. Why do we keep having ten man tags? Uh, wh why? Well, put it simple, right? Uh, 2014, if I look at the year in whole, right, of WMWA, uh, we wrestled at Kevin Landry's ring the entire year, so pro wrestling ring the whole the whole year throughout. Um, a lot of great matches, but you think of a lot of the great matches. Like, what one match of the year? Evan versus CJ versus uh, Bobby Otis, triple threat, right? Champ triple champions match, triple threat. And a lot of the other strong contenders were one-on-one -on -one matches, right? Um it's it's good to change up the game, right? I mean, we cannot have the same one on one matches all the time. If we if every main event was uh, Dawson versus Angel or Dawson versus Backyard from show one to one hundred, it you know it, it'd be same old shit, right? You know what I mean? We want Energy to change versus up the game. Angel five hundred and forty two. Exactly, you can burn out a fresh matchup real quick. Um, that's for sure, and I mean that's why wrestling fans, regular wrestling fans, are so jaded by John Cena is because he's the main event all the time, you know, so, um, so yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that 10 minute tags are not the highlight of the say 2014 or any tag matches, tag matches in 2014 were pretty poor. Um, most, most wrestlers would agree with that. Um, but what do you do 
when you have a weak muscle or a weak limb, you, you work it out. You try to get it better. You try to improve upon it. So uh, to, to the 10 men in that 10-man tag, both heel and face side, they did a very good job in the match. Now, the last four got a little messy. None of those guys would tell you otherwise. But, uh, you know, you, you got to try to get better at it. So um, it's not so much about the whole roster being and, – and keep in mind, I know it seems like we only have 10 guys, but there was at least – Two or three guys on that card that were not in that match. Um, but yeah, I mean, our tag matches have gotten better. And if you think about it, I want to say maybe we've only had about eight 10-man tags in the history of WMWA. And uh, think about it, we've had 141 shows up to this point. Um, it'll be 143 after the double taping Sunday. Uh, it's nice to change it up and have a different kind of main event. You know what I mean? Or have a big featured match for the show. So, I mean, you're looking at maybe less than one out of every 14 shows we do a 10-man tag. So that's not even once a year. It's really not even once a year, you know. So, okay. um, so All yeah, right. regardless of the roster size, a, a 10-man tag, once in a blue moon, um, I mean, maybe being a cluster here and there, but it's not going to kill anybody. It's good to change up the pace. All right, well, fair enough. Well, and speaking of clusters... Uh, we're going to get down to another question. Boom, right away. We're knocking these right off just to give you, the viewer, as much information as totally possible. And uh, so the video doesn't run out. And so the video doesn't run out again. <laughs> we only did this once, twice, three times. Anyways, so, um, so again, one of the questions is, uh, so what was one of the worst stiffs in, in all of wrestling that you have not only taken but uh, was given as well? Okay. Um, that's a good question, actually. I like that one. Um what comes to mind, I, I have a, I don't know, I really can't think of anything where I've been intentionally stiff or, or you know, because th that would be a receipt. But um, a funny one is the Angel story. Now, 2005, Angel was going to be heavyweight champion. He was going to win it in the first ever WMWA six-pack challenge, a match that came over from SFW. Mm -hmm. Um so Angel, the plan was to, we're going to kind of, not we're going to stiff Angel, but we were definitely going to make him work for it. We was going to take, and Angel was pretty good at taking moves, despite the fact he landed like a kitty cat, where his feet would hit first uh, before the rest of his body. Um, yeah, that was fucking retarded. And it's funny too, in that match, I've hit moves that I've never done in WWE before. Uh, that James Storm move, where it's like the razor's edge, and he does a spin, uh, I forget what it's called, but I did that to Angel, hit him with a razor's edge. This, that, and the other thing. Um, I remember Bill and me did some tag team moves to him, but at some point he was going to get his offense back in there too, and we were going to do the spot. Yeah, he was, was going to pin someone. Yeah, he was going to pin someone who was going <laughs> to win the championship, uh, the, the the number one championship in the league. So it's not like you know we were going to make him look like shit and then have him not come out on top, right? So uh, we, we Angel and I pulled a spot out of Loki's playbook, right, where he would do the two kicks to the chest and then one to the face. So... And Angel can throw his kicks, uh, and I think he didn't even have kick pads at the time. I could be wrong, but I think he's wearing jeans in the match, so you can't even tell. Um, so he kicks me once, he kicks me twice, kicks him pretty hard, right? So I'm gearing up for this this kick to the head, and I'm like, all right, you know, I'm going to put my hand up the last second, and it's what you do. You don't want to get kicked in the head or break your nose or anything like that. Um, so I take the two kicks in the chest, and then I'm expecting the third kick in the face, because Angel and I went over this, he's going to kick me in the face, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to kick you in the face, man. <laughs> and then, and then I go to put my hands up here, so he gets a clean motherfucking shot at my chest, unprotected, um, and just completely knocks the fucking wind out of me. Uh, and you actually hear me on camera go like, ah, oh, shit. And I've shown that to like my friends who don't even like wrestling or don't even care for it. And because it's me getting fucking kicked in the chest as hard as humanly possible, they think it's the funniest fucking thing on the planet. So uh, I, I do remember that a lot. And you know, back in the day, Angel, Angel, it was known. Uh, for those kicks. You were commentating that match, too. You in Backyard. Of all people, be that's how fucking many guys, you want to talk about most of the roster being in a match. When Backyard is commentating, that's how you know most of the roster is in a match. Seriously. Side fucking note. Backyard does not... Backyard don't talk. Mm -mm. Look at all of his rain work. Backyard don't talk. But anyways, you know, Angel, Angel had been in, known for that stuff, and he'd been known for kicking square in the face, too, and, and causing a lot of... Uh, uh, bleeding. Oh, can I can I go into that? I just, I just remembered another thing too. My last, I wrestled in ICW as well, the other league. Um, and in 2003, when SFW, the league that I came from and Drake came from, uh, started back up full force again. 
I'm like, you know, I don't want to be in ICW anymore. I don't like it here. I mean, I like some of the people. I just don't like it here. So I was wrestling what I knew to be my last match against Angel. Um, and Angel did this kick that Rico used to do, the, the manager for Billy and Chuck, where he'd have your arm between his legs and he would mule kick you. And he mule kicked me dead in the fucking bridge of the nose. Yeah, you're not the only one. Uh, so he did kick me right in the bridge of the nose and I'm bleeding everywhere. And you know what? It didn't hurt that bad, but obviously I'm gushing blood everywhere. So I continued the match, finished it. I had beat Angel, and you know what? It was it, it, it was good that day because I felt vindicated because people kind of gave me my props. Like, man, dude, you lost a lot of blood. You kept going. You finished that match. So, I mean, like, good for you. So it felt like good to get a little recognition from that day. But uh, the worst one um, I feel about is you because – we had a semifinal match uh, in uh, the original WWE tournament in 2004 for the heavyweight title. And Drake didn't even fucking have to beat anybody to get to the finals. He was so he's such a smart motherfucker. He found a way to get to the semifinals without beating anyone. Uh, <laughs> Bill booking for you. <laughs> uh, so it was Drake versus Rush. And now keep in mind, you figure, oh, they're from the same league, right? A lot of guys that come from the same league have wrestled each other a fucking at least a dozen times. Drake and I have never wrestled each other. We we had maybe a run in in an eight man tag where we did a couple moves to each other. That's it. Now the only thing you've done is a sick Robert Jones on me. And fucking when you got cronies, what the fuck do you need to wrestle people for? You know what I mean? Have them beat him up. So um, so fuck it. So I'm wrestling Drake and uh, uh, what do you call it? So I'm just not sure what to do because he's a heel, I'm a heel. So we're trying to figure that out and stuff like that. And then I throw a couple loose, like, you know, forearm elbows, and I throw them pretty loose, so the, by accident. And the second or third one, I popped them right below his eye, and he had the nastiest fucking black and blue for the for a while. And it was at least two to three weeks. It yeah. Was, it was fucking ridiculous. Um, I had to explain to everyone. Fuck, yeah, his girlfriend, his mom, you know, you know, teachers, whoever the fuck it may be, he's got to explain, ah, oh, you know, I'm... I, what did you say, actually? Now, to be to be, complete, I, <laughs> to be completely honest, I said I just hit myself while I was sleeping. Because I, I mean, just fucking go. Oh. I mean, you're in high school. You I mean it's you're not you're not gonna say, oh, backyard wrestling and this and that. And you know, of course, you should see the other guy. Because <laughs> someone else would say, you know, say this or say that. You know, I'll, I'll, a lot of the uh, wrestlers back in the day were kind of. Uh, in the closet, so to speak, with the wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't the best way to pick up girls. Hey, baby, you want to come see me beat up this guy in the backyard? I'm I wrestle dudes on a trampoline. I'm booked. What's up? Come on, bitch. I'm booked to win. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. So, so, anyways, you, you, you'd mentioned there um, uh, during some time during ICW, which was obviously very early in your wrestling career. Now, now, what made you want to, you know, start backyard wrestling? What, how... How did you, because I mean, back with SFW, it was pretty much your brainchild, you know, it was your backyard, your everything, and how did all that start? Um, well, it wasn't, well, it, we had, most of the time it was in my backyard, but before that it was in other people's backyards too. Um, but to start, to just going back to how I even watched wrestling, I remember Monday's the worst day of the week, it's, you got five days of school left before you get to your weekend, and I know it's still, so I'm, I'm hanging around Monday night, and I'm flipping the channels, and I'm like, there's got to be something on TV, and so I, I turn on Monday Night Raw, and I see the Dudley Boys, and they have Mae Young, and they put Mae Young, who at the, this 2000, January 2000 or so. She was still an old bitch back then. She was still old as fuck. <laughs> Um, and they put her through a table, and I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like, I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. And of course, it got me hooked. Uh, you know, you just, you stay through the commercial, you see the next guy, you're like, what the hell, you know, like, who's this guy? You know what I mean? Like, there were so many interesting characters. Who's this guy? How like, much does he weigh? How much does this guy weigh? <laughs> you know? And then you, I mean, uh, they didn't have Stone Cold and Undertaker at the time. They were both out with injuries, but they had The Rock. And the Radicals had just debuted. I was a big fan of Benoit and Guerrero and Latino Heat. And then I love Triple H. Triple H is my favorite. So one thing that left another. The next thing you know, I'm a hardcore wrestling fan. And then I, I got like a foam title at uh, Toys R Us and hanging out at my buddy Anthony's house. He wrestled as Edge Crusher. Uh, I was like, hey, let's go outside and have a match for this belt. You know what I mean? Next thing you know, we have a wrestling league. Sum it up. Bring in some of the neighborhood kids. Our friend Ian, who is Vector X, um, is credited as one of the founders of SOW, the three of us, uh, Edge Crusher, Vector X, and Rush. Um, now, don't get me wrong. This this was, 
2001. We 2001. Well, I'm pretty sure this was before fucking YouTube, right? YouTube like, came out in 05 or started in 05. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like, you know, you actually had seen this and other stuff and said, hey, let's do this. Like a lot of the kids nowadays, they, they see so many of these videos and they, they put up stuff. Uh, well, kind of like we do, but you watch like, one scary. of our matches. Like, you, hey, hey, Drake, can you go check out this main event from last show, right? You'll check it out and the match will end. It will recommend something else to you of similar circumstances. Yeah. We didn't have that. No, there was the DVDs like you'd see at like FYE, like Backyard Wrestling Extreme. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like oh, I, was, I actually man. think I had one of those in my fucking closet somewhere. I'm pretty sure I have one of those with uh, those those kids, Josh Prohibition and stuff like that. I remember one night in which we had stayed at Bill, uh, which we'd stayed at Toogies, and which I had bought. What was it? Women Extreme, Extreme Wrestling. Wrestling. You fucking idiot. WWE because I don't know what the fuck we were. Bill thinking. was like, ah, I'm just fucking do it. But I, I think Bill thought that there was gonna be like titties in it or something like that because it was pretty much just driving. You know, there wasn't there. titties, but there were was the Pebble, the Commissioner, the guy that was like a rock parody. Oh Jesus, that Christ. was fucking. Oh no, the Ghost. It was the ghost? Um, I think it was ghost or something. Oh, okay. Something like Some that. Some fucking terrible name. He, he was like a 20, 20, 20 to 25 pound overweight rock who, who, who came out. He, he dressed like just like him. He looked just like him. And, and he, he sounded pretty decent. But, I mean, he, you could tell the little fucker was, was, was definitely overweight. Yeah. But, uh, but that was, oh, my God. That yeah, was, yeah. So, I mean, uh, there was different ways to watch wrestling back then. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, you find out, hey, there's another wrestling league. Because ICW was also in Springfield. So... Um, it's pretty crazy, you know, there's two leagues that, you know, ran for a few years and accomplished a few things in the same, you know, probably, I don't know, 10, less than 10 miles apart, you know what I mean? They had a, a dozen or so guys each, you know, so at one point or another, so. Yeah, no, I mean, is is well, that's, that's, uh, that's ridiculous. Um, so, we just talked about the beginning, your beginnings of wrestling. Let's, let's talk about the end here. No. Oh. Okay. Now, you're officially retired? Unofficially retired? What is the word on this? Um, I would say that I'm retired, but, I mean, I came back for the 10th anniversary, you know. Because um, some people who say they're retired have actually proven to stay retired and haven't Brett Favre the fuck back multiple times. Uh, your wife would just fucking kill you if you came back, too. There's, there's a difference. <laughs> well, um, well, I mean, how, well, how about this? So you're officially retired. During the wrestling... During any of the highs or lows, and probably this would be the lows, was there ever any ever part that you consider just quitting? Just say, fuck it, I'm done. I would I'm say just... during ICW, it was kind of like... Uh, that short into your, into your wrestling? Yeah, career? because like you know, you come into this thing like a ball of fire and you're just so passionate about it. And then you join uh, this league that um, you know has its own fucking agenda. And um, you know, it was just a shame. Like, and this is a story involving some of the other guys. My first encounter with Dave Dawson was an ICW. Um, Brandon would maneuver, and Brandon's an interesting guy. He wrestled as uh, Fate, um, and, uh, but we definitely bumped. We did not like each other by the time SOW and ICW were both in their prime. We just didn't like each other. Um, but I remember they came in. There was it was Justin Moore, Dave Dawson, and uh, this other guy who wrestled as Rain. And uh, three of them had a triple threat match in what I consider one of the best matches uh, in ICW history. I thought the match was phenomenal. They just they just knew how to work. They were so fluid and kept going. It was an elimination, and I'm just I was just blown away. And uh, and then I'm standing next to Brandon and I'm like, dude, this match is awesome. And he's like, it's all right, it's whatever. And it's just because it wasn't fucking hardcore wrestling that he didn't fucking care that much, you know? Like they had a thing. And, uh, you know, they wanted to do it their own way. And see, that's the difference with, with WMWA. You know what I mean? People have their own styles. Let's bring them here and have them do their own thing. You know what I mean? We have a few guys that have been really technical. Um, I, myself, at some points have felt like I've been pretty good in the technical aspect. Not always. Dawson, uh, Bill, is Ethan Payne, Justin Moore. And then there's other guys that are very good entertainers or other guys that thrived in the hardcore. But WMWA kind of meshed them together. And I just felt like w, uh, ICW was so, so, so political. You know what I mean? I, um, I remember being booked in a triple threat with Doherty, who wrestled in WWE as Chad Viper, against him and Angel. And um, he was going over. And, like, the whole 
three-way phone conversation was how are we going to make Doherty look good? You know what I mean? At, at just like, you know, it's basically how it was. It was so political, and they had their own little clique, and this, this, and the other thing. And I remember being the last straws when Bill came in, and he was going to be pushed above me. And no disrespect to Bill, who was a great, great wrestler. But it just felt disrespectful, you know what I mean? Like, um, I'd, I'd put my time in there, and I was like, screw this, you know. Um... You're just doing stupid things and you're not having any fun. You know what I mean? You don't. You, you dread going. I dreaded going to the shows every month. So that was probably the only time I wanted. Well, I wanted to at least stop wrestling there. You know what I mean? So okay. So what do you got next, man? All right. So we'll rush with such a varied roster that we have here. Um, you know, some of the people have done. Uh, you know, indie wrestling and, uh, and have been trained for a you know an extended period of time. Um. Versus, you know, your background, which has been mostly, um, mostly backyard. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've been doing it for like 12 years again, but mostly backyard. How, how do you lead everyone in, 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 as in terms of Booker? Like how, how do you try and manage so many different people with, with their varying uh, skills? Um, that's, that's. Easier said than done, but um, and there's a lot of trial and error. I mean, uh, you get look at a guy like the bouncer, right, or just bouncer, um, who's become WWE champion before, and he's made it to the top. Um, he came into in 2005, and he didn't know a arm lock from a headlock, any of that stuff. And you know, but when I like, and then it goes to other guys too, like um, like Kincaid just just came in, who's you know uh, working as enhancement talent right now. But I don't see him as like, oh, he's only, you know, he only knows this much or he only knows that. It's like, let's let's use him for what he's got right now, right? Let's have him just do quick jobs, wrestle for a minute or two, you know, keep him, um, you know, show what he knows. And that way that we don't expose him. And then as that happens, we can develop him and have him get better and then have started to have longer matches and then have him start to grow out, right? Um, same thing with Bouncer in 2010. We put him with Olin's character Bukaki and they were a tag team and then you know what he's only in the ring half the time and then he can do the fire ups and stuff like that and then the hybrid title came in which had stipulations to it and that was his first singles title one in 2011 going back to the bouncer and uh you know that that rumble in the jungle is bouncer likes to call it where him and Aaron wrestle all around Dawson's yard with the overgrown trees that did look like South America yeah um but you know what? You just play to someone's strengths, and then eventually they do develop and uh, more skills and more ability, and and whatnot. Like uh, I don't really see people as like uh, I see their strength, and I just try to you know let them go with themselves. You know what I mean? So that's just, that's just pretty much it. Like you know, truly trying to see someone's strong points and try to play to them, and then they see that you're trying to do that, so they kind of get on board with it. Okay. I think that's how it goes. Well, so so a part two to add on to this. Um, what makes you think, if you do indeed think, you are the best person for this job to book? Um, you know, what makes you think you're the best person for it? And if not, who do you think would be um, a stand-up number two booker? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I've trusted, you know, Dave Dawson, uh, he's got an eye for it. You know, he's always been good. I've always consulted with him. And uh, times when I was not able to make the show uh, here and there, he used to book it. Um, Olin books uh, in the summer and spring of 2011. I mean, I'm not the only guy that's ever booked at WMWA. But um, I, I'm thankful that I have the trust of the, the majority of the roster. I would say I don't want to speak for everyone. Um, so, I mean, if it's... Not broke, don't fix it. And on top of that, you know, WWE is not going to last forever. You know, I mean, who knows how long we're going to keep going for. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. It's That's a tough question to answer because I'm not going to, you know, arrogantly say I'm the best guy for the job. You know, who knows. But um, what I like to do is I like to get with the wrestlers and, you know, get feedback from them and work with them. Because everyone feels like they have, know what's best for them. And if I can work with them to try to come up with a, something that we can on a compromise and get their feedback and combine it with my feedback and then get the best possible solution, then everyone is essentially the booker. We can tell you, how, I've, I've asked Aaron Douglas dozens of times, who do you want to wrestle next show? Or this guy, who would you like to work with? Would you like to feud with this guy? I don't just assume that they want to do this or that and the other thing, you know? So I, I, I feel like 
Um, everybody's kind of the booker in some sense of the word, you know. Um, I feel like that anyways. So. All right. Well, uh, we're going to about wrap it up here. Uh, any final thoughts? Anything you want to add to the WMWA roster? Um, we'll have a great show Sunday. Drake, I want to thank you for uh, getting this video done. And uh, we'll send it up to Mr. Surge. And I hope the uh, WMWA roster and, and group see it and all that other good stuff. And hope you can be a guest on in the future. Awesome. Well, again, thank you everyone for watching Bafo Asks What, Episode 1. Uh, episode 2, obviously, will be up the next time we have a show. And so since we have such a, a time in between, please post, would you like to be a, a guest on Bafo Asks What? Um, and then, of course, please start throwing those questions. As soon as I know who's going to be the next guest, um, we can start working on those questions. And the more time I have to work on the questions, the better quality they're going to be, so on and so forth. We can start taping possibly early, and we won't have to avoid technical errors or any other type of errors we may have had like this taping. So, again, thank you very much. I am Eric Drake. This is Rush. Have a beautiful evening. Bye, guys.